How's it going everybody? It's Jeff Bain with Team Real and the Blues. Well today out here we're finally reaching a milestone with this boat. I'm starting to put it all back together. Right now I'm working on the consoles and I've never built a console before out of aluminum anyway. I've built plenty out of other stuff. I even converted a uh, truck toolbox into a console on my big boat. I don't know if you've seen that video. If you haven't, go back and look. It's a uh, my catfish boat walkthrough and you might get a kick out of what I use for a console on that boat. But this boat, I wanted to actually build my own console. The console that was in the boat originally was like this. Really wide. I really don't need one that big. And I just didn't like the way it looked. It was nasty. And that boat only came with one console. Well, I'm going to make that a split windshield, dual console, because I fish mostly in the wintertime. Well, here is one I came up with. And I've got one of them built. Of course, I wanted to see if I could do it first before I went through the effort of trying to film it, so yeah, we'll see. But here is what I built, and I'm actually pretty proud of it. For uh, not really worked with a uh, TIG welder before, I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out. But uh, that's the front. You can see I got it tapered on all the sides, and here's the back of it. It's got a little taper on the back side of it and I use diamond plate for the top. But this thing is going to mount in the boat. I'm going to make two of them, and I'm going to show you in this video how I made these. Uh, this is the first one. We'll go through the process of how I made that one while I'm making the second one. I appreciate you watching. Let's see what we got. Okay, uh, first things first. What I've done I never built the console before, so essentially I was starting off with just an idea in my head. I used some of the basic designs from that right there just to give me a general idea of shape and size. But this boat had one of those little wraparound windshields since it was a single console. I'm going to go with a full windshield, some kind of full windshield design with a uh, split window. We'll have to see it. Like I say, it's just a work in progress. But I wanted the console to have a little lean to the front side of it. And I want a little lean to the back side for the steering wheel. That way the steering wheel is comfortable. It puts it in a comfortable position. Well, since I've never built one before, I had a bunch of uh, cardboard and I had a bunch of this real thin aluminum laying around. I use it in construction. So I actually just uh, built the console out of this stuff here and I used painter's tape to tape it together. And once I got it all taped together, I used this to get an idea of exactly what my shape of my material would be. Like I say, anytime you do a project like that, take the hour it takes to take a cardboard or really thin plywood or, like me, sheet metal, and build it out of it. It doesn't take that much extra effort to do it, and that way once you get it done, you got perfect templates to make everything, and you've already went through it one time in your head, and I mean, this was like the third attempt at the design I wanted to use, and after three attempts I finally got my angles the way I want it and you can see this here is the back side of the console this here is the front side I wanted it to have a nice little flat spot at the bottom so that I could put switches along here and that way it puts the steering wheel at the perfect angle well like I say save yourself from some money save yourself some aggravation and make you some templates whenever you do something like that just tape it together with painters tape so here's what we got going on I'm getting ready to cut this aluminum. This right here is just about an eighth inch thick. That's what I'm building these consoles out of. I've already made me some templates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. This is going to be the first piece. This is going to be the back side. It's going to be uh, 12 inches. And I'll bend it and form it to make the console once I get this part cut out. All I do to cut it out, I just use something over my face, some form of goggles and some hearing protection. And I use a carbide tooth blade on a skill saw that has as many teeth as I can get. This one here is like a 40 tooth. That works perfect. Just take your time and go slow and it'll cut through aluminum with no problem at all. There we go. Let's 
cut and what I'll do is I'll cut it the length using my stomp brake and we'll get it all formed up and get it ready to go. Nice thing about having lots of tools to play with. There we go, 23 and 7 eighths is exactly where it needs to be cut off at. Boom. Done. Nice, straight, smooth cut. I'm going to cut the other one. Factory edge. Side cut right there. One three seven. Point three seven. We used our uh, templates here, you can see, and I cut out all of these uh, pieces right there. You can see, fits my template just perfect. So we got all that done, and you can see on my template how I already had a mark on here. This is my measuring mark, so I could use my little uh, homemade uh, metal brake to put the bends on that. So I already got that already figured out. So. All I need to do now, this is some old aluminum I had laying around out here. I picked up a bunch of sheets of it from a salvage yard uh, about three or four months ago. So I had it laying around, kind of weathered, but it's no big deal. Makes it a little bit of a pain to butt the weld, but it's all in the prep. I'm going to go ahead and sand this down, get all this old uh, oxide layer and all the nastiness off of it, get it back down to bare bright aluminum, and that'll make it a whole lot easier when I get into the uh, welding part. That one I cleaned it, but I didn't clean it enough. There was a couple spots that it got pretty pretty hard to weld and I had to really grind it and clean it. So this one, I'm gonna try to get this perfectly clean, save me the effort right now that I don't waste it later on down the line. Let's go ahead and get these cleaned up and then we'll figure out how to make the bins and I'll show you what I've done. talk about right here get it down to that bare bright aluminum I'm gonna go ahead and clean this one more time I'm just getting the rough part off right now but I'm gonna probably go over this one more time with a little bit finer sandpaper like I say the effort I put into it right now the 30 minutes it's gonna take me to prep this is gonna save me a whole lot of aggravation when I go to start welding it up just to FYI alright we got them all clean clean enough now until I do my bins and then we'll clean it up again after we do the bins. This is just a little metal break I built. Uh, something simple. It's just a couple pieces of angle iron. But now we'll go ahead and get these pieces and go ahead and get them bent. Right size. Alright, we got it exactly the same. We'll go ahead and make that bend on it, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll repeat the process for this one right here. All right, we got it all laid out. We'll go ahead and lock this down. Like I say, it's about as primitive a uh, metal brake as you can get, but it works, and it didn't cost me nothing. And no more bending than I do around here. This is really perfect for what I need. Now this one, it didn't really have a whole lot of bend on it. This is the side pieces. Now, when you go to bend your other one, you got to make sure you bend it to where they go toward each other. I kind of goofed that up on the last one. Had to cut another piece. I've been them both the same way. All right, that already get it close enough. And then we'll make the other one match. There we go. There's my bend. And that'll get me. I'll take it over and I'll lay it on that one to make sure it's the same as the one I already built. Now, I just got to make sure I bend this one opposite. So I need to bend this one like this. With this side under here. And we'll do the same thing. We'll take the same measurements that we did that time. All right, we got that one bent. So we'll go ahead and take it out. 
And we'll try it against that. And like I say, they should be opposite each other. And thank goodness they are. See what I'm talking about? They're opposites. One to go on the left, one to go on the right. And like I say, I'll clean these up right before I start welding. We'll go and confirm that these fit the uh, template here. And we'll go from there. So now we need to just go ahead and make this piece right here. I'll pick out which is the best side of this, which it don't matter. I'm cleaning both sides up. Both sides are exactly the same. Uh, it's perfectly, if you drew a down, line down the middle and you folded it in half, both of these would be perfect on each other. All right. We'll go ahead and make this bend. Three and five sixteenths. Three and five sixteenths. I do believe this was one inch. There we go. That should be right. And there's the dash pound. Bill. I'll check it and confirm it on the other one and we'll be ready to go. All right, so here's the pieces. Like I said, I gotta clean them up again after breaking them. But essentially this is what we're gonna have. We're gonna have these two pieces like this right here. And this right here is made to go. Sorry about that. But this is made to go just like this right here. Taking a, we'll clean these up and once we get them cleaned up, we'll tack everything together and then once we get it all tacked together, we'll make sure everything fits right and we'll go ahead and weld her all the way up. All right, next thing we gotta do is go ahead and just tack all this stuff together. Uh, I'll just uh, get it all tacked up and then we'll go from there. up solid and then I'll weld the top piece in. I'm going to cut a piece that's perfectly square, stick it at the top and that'll get everything racked up and get it perfectly square. diamond plate. I got this all welded up. I got a stanchion there to hold that up and I'll just put this just like this. We'll go ahead and tack that in then we'll make our back. Coming right together. Well here we go. Uh, I got it all welded up last night uh, before I went in the house. I stayed out here at about one o'clock in the morning goofing off. So I went ahead and got all the pieces tacked together. I know you've seen that in the first part here. Got everything tacked together, and then I ran all the welds on it. Again, I'm pretty new to the TIG game, but so my ripples aren't very uniform, let's say. But what I done was I went ahead and put a really good, thick, I added a lot of filler rod to it, and uh, then I ground it all down to get me its nice, finished, smooth corners. I like the smooth corners better than I do the ripple look anyway. Now once I get better at the ripple look, then I might like that better, but I really like the smooth corners. And as you can see, it turned out really, really nice. I put the diamond plate on top. The only thing I got left to do on this is to make this back piece. 
That's a pretty simple piece anyway, because all I'm gonna do is just lay it up here, make sure this is nice and square, make sure it fits these perfectly, go ahead and make my bend to where it fits the back, and then I'll mark these two sides to cut it and weld it up. But there we go, there's my progress up to this point. I'm gonna go ahead and make the back for it real quick. We'll get it put on. I'll show you what it looks like after I get done. I'm not gonna bore you with all the grinding and cleaning and sanding and welding, but I'll show you the product we get this done. Then it's gonna be time to put it on the boat over there and see if it fits and looks half as good as I think it will in my head. Let's hope. Hi, right, we went ahead and got this piece made. I want to show you how I done it once I got it made. The most important part about doing any little project like this, no matter if it's out of steel, whether it's out of aluminum, whether it's out of even PVC or wood, make sure you fit it. The time you spend to get the, the fits perfect will make the product at the end of it look 100 times better. Like I say, I'm an average or below average when it comes to TIG, but if my fitting is really, really good, I don't have to be great to get a good looking joint. So, you'll look, you can see right here, everything is nice and tight. Everything is running right along the seams. I got, literally when I pull that in, there is no gap. Everything is touching dead tight. There's gonna be no place for the gases to blow through. Top's gonna work out perfectly. We're gonna get this thing welded up and I'll show you what it looks like. Well, we've got it all welded in. I've already ground this side down and this side down. But you can see what I was talking about. I'm just not consistent with the beads. I just, I can lay a good one. I can lay a pretty straight one now. But I'm just, uh, especially on diamond plate, I, I jump a lot trying to drag my hand. It's just a, oh well, like I say, old dog, new trick. I'm getting there though. But you can see, this is why I grind these down and roll them. I'm not really grinding them flat. I'm just sort of rolling them to take all the little ridges off. I put plenty of extra metal in there. And after I got it done, I actually went in there and welded the inside of it also. So, you know, I think it's plenty strong. But I'm going to go ahead and weld this part down, and then you can see what it looks like. Well, there she is. That's console number two. So we got them both made. I mean, it's a little dirty still. Where I've just rough sanded it, but I think it's gonna turn out nice. Here's the back, here's the side profile. You notice there's less slope on the back because I'm gonna try to have a windshield that follows this angle. That's the reason why it's like that. And the front is made where the steering wheel will be at the right angle to make it comfortable. But she's all welded up, solid. I put welds around the inside of it also, round, around, around, and done it in all the corners. That'd give them a little bit more strength and a lot less likely to crack. Like I said, this is something structural. I wouldn't have ground everything down like I did, but seeing the fact this is pretty much all cosmetic, I ain't too worried about it. I think it's gonna look real, real good when it's on the boat. Well, I'm gonna take and stop the video right there. So uh, I appreciate you watching. We'll get these things cleaned up, and hopefully on the next video, we'll be getting these things installed and getting the bottom uh, balances made for them, and we'll get this boat finished up. As always, I appreciate you watching. I hope you got something out of the video, if nothing else other than just entertainment. And I hope we got some good ideas on how to build your own consoles and maybe it will lessen a little bit of the fear to try it yourself. I've never done it before, so I was able to do it, so so can you. Appreciate you watching. If you're not a sub, sub. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. And as always, thank you for watching.